This presentation will be about uh, building a scalable and flexible MySQL HA environment with Ansible MHA and ProxySQL. ProxySQL is in the new player. Uh, we like it really much and see how it works with other uh, tools. About me, uh, my name is Miklos Munkasel. I'm from Hungary and I have a pretty long history with Linux and MySQL. I used to be a back-end developer then uh, as an Anos guy. I worked for Walt Disney and uh, after that I joined to Palomino DB as I was a consultant for many pretty big companies and, and I'm a freelance consultant since uh, working for Edmodo. Here you can find my contact in case you have questions. So I built this thing called Damp. That's a dump naming, but still. So uh, keep in mind, this is a testing environment. So this is not the use case for Docker, but I want it, to, want it to be as portable as it could be. And I didn't want to install anything on the testing computer. So you only need Docker to run and GNU bash, nothing more. So it's built on Docker, Ansible, MHA, and ProxySQL is licensed at GPL3. And the important part is the Ansible playbook is eventually an excerpt for, uh, from a production where we use it with MHA. So this is an enterprise grade code you have here. You can take it and implement it on your own environment and you can forget about the Docker, of course. Okay, uh, let's move forward. So yeah, uh, as I already mentioned, I, I uh, chose Docker because uh, I've been using it for a while to testing the uh, Ansible playbooks and because it's portable. Ansible is my favorite choice when it comes to config management and it's simple agent test is just SSH in and execute the command is necessary. If it, the change is already there, it won't touch the server. It has templating, a pretty good one, and what is important uh, from our standpoint that uh, it has modules for MySQL and ProxySQL. Thanks for Ben Mildon for the let letter. MH is an old but proven and stable open source HA utility written in Perl. It's easy to configure. It supports automated, uh, <coughs> non-interactive and interactive master failover, but it doesn't deal with moving with VIPs or any other aspect of the uh, failover. It only uh, deals with changing the topology to the desired. And ProxySQL, thanks uh, for Colin for the great presentation. It's uh, a credit routing rewriting book, uh, uh, kill, uh, killing tool based on rules and patterns. Uh, it's also loot balancer. You can uh, split reads and writes. Uh, it uh, is also it can be used as a query cache. It supports connection pooling. You can prioritize the queries based on the importance, and it supports many more things. But what it is not, it doesn't execute replication topology changes. What MHA does, so they eventually uh, a really good pair because of this. So uh, this is how ProxySQL look, uh, looks like in a nutshell. This is the application server. Uh, ProxySQL has a, a configuration interface can be accessed via a standard MySQL client. And it's, it uh, stores uh, the configuration items in tables. Uh, you can, uh, by default, you can uh, just log in the interface uh, uh, on the port uh, 6032. Uh, and the default uh, port for the application is uh, 6033. And based on the routing and other settings, it will route your queries to the desired uh, uh, cluster. Uh, and uh, instead of using master and slave, it uses concepts of host groups. So for example, the master down there is the uh, host group three, and the host groups four are the slaves. And once the topology is changes, it automatically detects the change is based on the read-only flag and move the servers from uh, one host group uh, to the other one. I'm going to show this how, how that works soon. So this is what I built. This is a web server, and everything is running on the Docker. This is not the use case for Docker, but it works fine. Uh, so uh, we have two, two clusters here, for example, one with uh, three slaves, one with two slaves, and there is the admin host. And within the admin host, an Ansible is locking, uh, running locally to configure ProxySQL and MHA based on the inventory file generated during the cluster creation. I'm going to show this not rocket science, uh, but uh, the automation works pretty fine. And the whole point is you can rerun the playbook once you change the topology or add another cluster, and it will regenerate every possible configuration item within ProxySQL and for MHA. 
to do the failovers, do query uh, rule, uh, routing or rewriting queries. Basically, that was the presentation part, and let's see the demo. I'm gonna create a cluster. So, uh, can you see the? Oh, let me increase it a little bit. Uh, uh, can you see it from the behind? Yes. Okay. How is it? How is it now? Thanks. Okay. So let's create a cluster. Okay, it created cluster one, two, three. I mean, created a cluster called Zephod with three machines, one master and two slaves. We wait for the Docker containers and the MySQL inside to be available. Yes, I'm gonna use Hitchhiker guides, guides to the Galaxy references. Okay, now the application is set up. Let's create another cluster called Arthur. This is going to consist from one master and one slave. And it will, and this little best script will also set up the replication. So let's see, we have a host file here. See, the inventory, the standard inventory file, Ansible file, is generated. Once the second cluster is ready, there is the uh, inventory entries for the cluster Zephod and the Arthur, and we are going to use the host group one for Zephod. Oh, sorry. Yeah, again. So uh, we are going to use the host group one for Zephod and host group three for Arthur this time. Okay, let's start running the playbook. So it's gonna use two files as the source of truth. One is the inventory file, and the other is uh, the groups uh, group words per all, and uh, you can change the ports, the IPs it's listening, the default application user, and uh, password, the credentials uh, it will um, set up on the MySQL, and uh, the privileges for this given uh, MySQL user. You can change the proxy SQL's uh, global variables here, and rerunning the playbook will apply these changes. It should be done in 60, 90, seconds depend on the speed of the internet connection. Uh, I'm running this on remote machines because it uh, install, uh, yeah, dependencies for MHA. That's the, that's the most time cons uh, consuming part. Once it's ready, I wrote a little, little script that makes it easier uh, to demonstrate use cases of the, for the proxy SQL and MHA, Do, uh, doing some sysbench. Yeah, installing sysbench is the last part of this playbook. Once it's done, I'm going to call this little guy proxy SQL menu. And well, uh, the list of features is uh, pretty long. So uh, let's see the servers configured in the proxy SQL. Everything is done. So we have a fully set up environment that's, that can be used from an application. There are MySQL servers and clusters behind. And uh, proxy SQL is absolutely aware of everything. So if you see, uh, there is the host group one that was for Zephod, and the two slaves are in the host group two, which is the uh, host group for readers. Let me show you how this looks like in proxy SQL. So the writer host group for Zephod is one is a writer, two is the reader host group, and it's three and four for the author. So uh, it also generated users. Oh, that was uh, it again. Uh, users is uh, selection three. Uh, there are uh, the users are duplicated because there is uh, one for the front end and one uh, for the back end. But the uh, point is, uh, proxy SQL is set up to use the uh, credentials. Uh, so the credentials is set up in proxy SQL is based on the host group, so it will be used uh, app one, app one for host group one, and app three, app three for host group three, and so on. So let's see uh, a failover with MHA. Oh, by the way, uh, every command we execute here, the terminal is pretty big, are printed above the menu points. So if you go to this menu and start playing with this tool, you can have the actual commands. So you can figure the rest out. And you can customize it whenever you want. So uh, 20 is the interactive failover for MySQL. Yes, we want to run this. And 
we will change the topology from uh, so using this master to using the tree as the new master. Yes, we want this, please. Tip, 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 tip. And switching to master was completed successfully. Check the servers. And we will see that the host group one is now contain the IPv3 and the rest is in the host group two. So proxy SQL detected the change and it moved the servers to the proper host group. This is how easy to do a failover, uh, failover with MHA and proxy SQL. You don't have to do anything. Applic it's absolutely transparent from the application's perspective, which is a great thing. OK, now let's see some statistics. Oh, unfortunately, uh, mm -hmm. OK. Query Digest is empty, host groups. It's still empty. OK. Let's run a, uh, run a, run a benchmark. Uh, to uh, run a sysbench, we have to prepare the database. Uh, it's, I'm going to run the sysbench prepare, which is basically this command. It, it's going, uh, going to fill the SB test one table. Once it's done, we can run the Let's run a short sysbench read-only test. It's many point sixteen. Try start it. Dum -da dum No errors. DPS is pretty okay. So now we are going to generate some traffic to show you. Uh, so I can show you the statistics. It looks better if you uh, decrease the size of uh, the, your terminal. So you can see that every reads and writes went to the host group one uh, because that's the writer host group and by default every application uh, the app one is routed to use the master on, on the host group one uh, you can have statistics by the host group so the summary uh, time of uh, the sum time spent on the given host group and the number of queries ran there now uh, let's change the game a little. Let's run the split read write, which is basically a simple command running replace into. You can see that we are going to add, add the rule, which is active, that every select should go to the second host group. I mean, this rejects that queries that matches that uh, this rejects will go to the second host group. Uh, if you pull the uh, query rules table, yeah, it's, this is what is uh, inside the runtime configuration of the proxy SQL now. If we read on the, uh, this test and check the statistics, we will see that a lot of queries are, uh, uh, were being rerouted to the host group too. Yeah, it's a little bit long for this presentation, but yeah, it's done. So you can see that these lines, these servers with the host group 2 also received reads. You can check the statistics about the host groups. Let's see it over here as well. And there is also a statistics about the query digest. So you can see these selects were run on the host group 1 uh, during the previous run, but later on, all the selects were executed on the second host group. So this is how easy to set up proxy SQL to send to to set up a really basic read write script split. Um, okay, uh, how much time do I have? Five minutes. Five minutes. That's nice. Oh, even better. So uh, let's have two consoles here. And we are going to execute. Uh, we are going to see what happens if we are uh, using proxy SQL for reading, and doing a failover in the meanwhile. So, in one of the windows, I'm gonna execute a longer sysbench 
that's 60 uh, seconds long. And in the other window, I'm going to execute a non-interactive failover. Eventually, it just doesn't stop you to confirm that you want to uh, want to change your topology. <laughs> no worries. OK, so we switched the master successfully in this window. And the other window, th there is this part when the failover happened, right under, way under one second, by the way, not around one second. There were some reconnects, but proxy SQL can, can resend the select queries if the underlying database dies. So it's really cool. Basically, this is what happens when you experience a failover uh, during reading through proxy SQL. And well, I also added some minor things like create a word database. Uh, since we have some minutes, let me show you how to add another cluster to this setup. Uh, damp. Let's stick to this example. Let's add the cluster uh, with two machines called Trillian. And it's done. Let's check the host file. Uh, here you can see there is a third cluster appear with the host group 5, so uh, it, the users will be F5, F5. While on the MySQL server, uh, the credentials on every MySQL server is up and gamble, which, which is configured here. So uh, don't mix the two. These are the credentials on the MySQL servers, and ProxySQL makes it transparent, and you can use different kind of credentials there. Just saying. OK, uh, now we have this new uh, inventory file. We can just read on the playbook, which is basically uh, this command. You should wait like 60 seconds. We don't have to reinstall everything. So if the proxy cycle is already installed, Ansible won't install it again. And uh, it won't execute most, most of the part. Only, only the part when, when it says changed. Adding new servers, that's something we want to add. Uh, we want to change with Ansible. Yeah, we are now generating the config file. That's it. And if you check the oh, here proxy circle menu. And the second is the show servers. The, the, the server truly appeared. Uh, its user appeared. It's in the, uh, it has its own host group. And well, yeah, that doesn't change at all. And uh, for example, uh, there is a, also a log part of this uh, little script that can show you the most important uh, log files, the read-only, the ping, and the connect log. And here you can see how it maps the servers in order to move it to the proper host group. Basically, this is what I wanted to show you. Questions? Uh, yeah, uh, Pro uh, proxy SQL uh, also adds the writer to the readers uh, by default because a master is, uh, is a source of read, and you can wait. Uh, you, you can also set up weights uh, for the server. So if you uh, if the master outweighs the slave, then the queries uh, are sent there uh, more likely. This is the expect. Uh, this is the 
expected behavior event, you want your data uh, back immediately, and th there is no chance of having uh, replication lag. By the way, uh, Proxy SQL checks the replication lag, and you can set up a threshold so it won't send uh, reads for a, a slave that's uh, higher than a given threshold. Sorry, by the way, uh, Krishov asked, uh, why is the writer in the reader host groups as well? That was the question. So the writer by default is also part, the, moni the, the proxy SQL monitor also puts the, uh, the writer instance to the reader host group. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you.